Now, in a two-level system, um, the energy that uh, is absorbed by the electrons to take them from a ground state to the excited state is the same as the energy given out um, when these things drop back down to the ground state. And so effectively what we get is uh, the photons coming in are the same as the photons coming out. The problem is it's very hard to get um, more of these atoms in a whole sample, which we're going to call N2. Uh, it's, big, it's very hard to get N2 being bigger than N1. And what we have is basically at energy level 1, in the total sample there are going to be N1 atoms at this state. At energy level 2, there are going to be N2 atoms at this state. And what you need for the stimulated emission of radiation uh, to have this kind of effect, where one photon comes out to give out 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on, that only happens if N2 is bigger than N1. So what we do in real life is we use um, a three-level system. And I'm just going to draw this extra energy level up here, and I'm going to call that E3. Now this time, what we do is, um, to get the, um, the actual atom up to this high energy level, we don't use this red light. Instead, we're going to use maybe white light, or oh, that's not right, white. We use some white light. Now what happens is, this white light, this kind of source of energy, comes in, and it causes the electrons to move up from E1 to E3. And effectively what we're doing is we are pumping in energy. And this is why we call it pumping the system. And, you know, this might be some kind of external white light source, for example. Now the thing is, it gets to this uh, energy level 3, and it instantaneously pretty much just drops back down to E2. Because this is like a really unstable situation. And uh, E2 is what we call metastable. So it's kind of, it doesn't really want to be there, but it can exist there for a short amount of time. Then what happens is that in this thing here, you might have some other photons, perhaps of red light, and if this energy of this photon is the same as the energy gap here, the photon here, as it moves by, it causes a stimulated emission of radiation. This then drops back down to the ground state, and in doing so, it gives out a photon of light. So what you have is one photon comes in, and then two photons are given out. And what happens then is that uh, you have some white light to energise this, it moves back up, it drops back down, and then when the next photon comes by it causes this stimulated emission. And what this means is that um, a lot of the time the actual uh, atoms, they're in the excited state. So what we can then get is N2 being bigger than N1. And obviously once these uh, atoms get down to N1, any time you have it, uh, this kind of white light in the system or kind of extra energy externally applied, it then just moves it back up and then it sits back down at this level. So what we have here is a three-level system with N2 being bigger than N1. We have a population inversion and therefore you're likely to get stimulated emission of radiation, giving a cascade effect of more photons given out. Can you go one better? Well, of course you can. You can have a four-level system. And here what happens is from the ground state at this level one, uh, you can basically pump it with light or some kind of energy, and it goes up to uh, energy level four in this case, which it then drops back down immediately down to energy level three. Now, what happens then is this again, this is our metastable phase. Uh, a photon comes in, causes a stimulated emission, which means that two photons come out the other side as it drops from level three down to level two. And uh, level two, Again, it's not a stable phase, and this can then drop back down to level 1. Okay, so effectively what we find is that the number of atoms at this stage, at uh, level 2 in this case, is pretty much zero. The number at level 4 is also pretty much zero, and that means the number at level 3 is actually quite high. And the big thing about this uh, population inversion is it's the difference between this level and the one beneath it. So N3 is always going to be bigger than N2, because N2 is effectively zero. And obviously, whatever the number is down here, it doesn't really matter at N1. But then, you know, again, once these drop back down to this stage, they move back up. You know, we have this external light source, maybe some white light or some highly energetic photon with more energy than these. It drops straight, straight back down here, and then most of the things are at level N3 before they drop down to N2 and then immediately down to N1. Now these three and four level systems, they're the way that we can basically get one photon of light to emit two, which gives out four, eight, sixteen and so on. And what we're doing is this light is being amplified by the stimulated emission of, radi of radiation and that is why it's called a laser.